well, that does it. It's hard to find the words, honestly, and, uh, well, I'll go over what happened in Game 7, but before we kick off, please hit that subscribe button. Alright, well, Game 7 it is. Going in, this game truly was probably one of the biggest games we've seen in the NHL for a very, very long time. On one side, you've got the Florida Panthers, who have let a 3-0 series lead dissolve into this winner-take-all Game 7. It's the Florida Panthers who got all the way here last season just to run out of gas at the finish line. And then on the other side, it's this Edmonton Oilers team that haven't been the whole way as this group. They had a first-round exit, a conference final loss, and a second-round loss to the Stanley Cup champions in the last three seasons. But getting to the Stanley Cup final, they came from behind in round two to beat Vancouver. And then they beat a Dallas team that were considered the favorites. And then they fought back from a 3-0 series deficit, largely on the back of the best hockey player in the world in search of his first Stanley Cup. So all those factors made this game... I mean, it's a Game 7 of the Stanley Cup Final. It doesn't get any bigger than this, but it made this game feel all the more special. The start to this Game 7 was full of energy, and it ended up being Florida with what I'd consider to be the first significant chance of the game, turning back up ice after a bouncing puck had been swatted away from Bobrovsky with Antoine Lundell's centering pass, just barely missing Oliver ekman Larson in front of the net after it hit Stuart Skinner's pad. Shortly after, Warren Fogle broke in, but he clipped Brandon Montour with a high stick on the way to the net that led to a Florida power play. The Panthers didn't get any big chances on that power play, but they'd strike just six seconds after the penalty had expired. Carter Verhage gives it here to Evan Rodriguez on the left wing half wall, and Verhage's going to go to the front of the net. Rodriguez works his way up the wall before throwing a shot towards the goal, with Verhage deflecting it home from the top of the crease, bidding Skinner through the five hole to make it 1-0 Florida. The Oilers trailed for just just over two minutes, though, with Cody Ceci after flinging a stretch pass straight to the stick of Matthias Janmark, who's on a breakaway. He goes blocker side past Bobrovsky to make it a 1-1 game. After the goal, Florida responded, responded with a few chances of their own, first from Alexander Barkov and then from a Vladimir Tarasenko deflection. Edmonton also, after it was 1-1, had chances to take the lead themselves. They held the majority of the offensive zone time in the second half of the first period and had their best chance come off the stick here of Evan Bouchard, who rang a slap shot from the line off the goalpost and out. Matthew Kachuk had a good chance to tight to close out the period, trying to give the Florida Panthers a 2-1 lead, but he just missed high, and the game remained tied heading into the second, and both Sir Stuart Skinner and Sergei Bobrovsky opened the second period with big saves early on before an Oiler power play generated a slew of great chances that were all kept out by Bobrovsky. Uh, this game needed a huge bounce back from the Panther goaltender after three consecutive uh, questionable outings at best, but his play to open the second period was borderline heroic for Florida, especially on that Oiler power play, and eventually it would lead to the Florida Panthers taking the lead. Heading into the last five minutes of the period, you see here Bobrovsky and Dmitry Kulikov combined to shut the door and then clear the puck away from danger in front of the Panther net, and that sends Florida back the other way. Carter Verhage hit Sam Reinhardt on the right side, and Verhage drove the center lane, opening up space for Reinhardt to approach the right circle and snap one past Skinner's glove to make it 2-1 Panthers. Panthers. Edmonton had the bulk of the third period chances, and it was either Bobrovsky or the Panthers' defense stopping them every time. Edmonton probably had their best chance to tie the game with just over seven minutes left in the third, but after a great chance in front, neither Connor McDavid or Zach Hyman could force the puck home off a scramble right there. It wasn't the first wild scramble around the Panthers' net either, with Evan Bouchard being denied by a Nico Mikola block during this sequence, and ultimately for Edmonton, that was it, and the game ended 2 1 Florida. For Oilers fans, a silver lining or a positive perspective on this isn't going to happen for a long time, let alone right now, the night of the loss, but the Oilers have reason to hold their heads up high. After Game 3, it would have been very easy for the Oilers to kind of just curl up and die. It's demoralizing enough to lose three times in a row to start a playoff series, but it kind of does sting all the more when you did everything possible the way Edmonton did to start this series against the Panthers. The Oilers played very well in at least two of the first three games, and being down 3 nothing at that point really should have killed them right there and then but instead they fought and three wins later they gave themselves an opportunity to win the Stanley Cup 
Florida did enough, though. They did enough to suppress the Oiler offense, and Sergei Bobrovsky responded when called upon. That was big, and Florida, did, you know, it was a fine game from Stuart Skinner, but Florida solved them twice, and that was enough. As much pressure as the Oilers have had on their backs throughout these playoffs, it's got to pale in comparison to what Florida must have been feeling, and the Panthers deserve a huge amount of respect for winning this game after the roller coaster of a series it had been to this point. As was widely speculated prior to the game, Connor McDavid won the Conn Smythe Trophy despite being on the losing side of the result. McDavid's playoff was record-breaking in itself, with his 34 assists the most in one playoff campaign in NHL history. He became the first player since Wayne Gretzky in 1993 to, to score 40 points in a playoff, and Gretzky is one of two players in NHL history alongside Mario Lemieux to have more than Connor McDavid's 42 points in one playoff run. Uh, McDavid was obviously Florida's main point of focus throughout the series, but he still mustered 11 points over seven games. Uh, I'd say he was deserving of winning the Conn Smythe. That'll do it from me for the Game 7 coverage. Thank you so much for watching, guys.